what we're going to talk about is a substation design suite for Inventor. So what we're calling that is P4I or P4 Inventor. Uh, so physical for Inventor, and that's what we're calling it as a short name for it to keep it distinct from P4A, uh, physical for AutoCAD, and separate from other ideas. So we're going to be talking about substation design suite for Inventor and specifically uh, the new uh, release 8.2, the 8.2 release and utility content update. So that's what we're here for. I'm going to, it's going to be about 40 minutes and we'll have a Q&A. We always have a Q&A afterwards. So we'll be about 40 minutes, but the utility content I'll talk about for about 15 minutes and the remainder will be for uh, the 8.2 release of SDS for Inventor. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube site. So I want to remind people that we do have a YouTube site where um, things get uh, copied to. All our webinars are posted on, it's, it's the Spatial Business Systems YouTube site. So if you go on YouTube, look up Spatial Business Systems. If you're on LinkedIn, we have uh, a couple hashtags, but it's Spatial biz Business Systems. So we keep that live on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, to get marketing and emails from us, you want to whitelist these emails. Uh, this webinar was, uh, was sent through marketing email, this one that we're watching now. So that's how that came. If you didn't get an email, you need to whitelist this. So what I want to first talk about is utility content. That's my, my first subject, and that's what I want to get into. So utility content, we had some updates recently with utility content. So we, had, we worked with CephCore. We added thousands of parts from CephCore. Uh, they've updated some and they've added many more parts. So uh, they're very good to us for putting these parts available to us. They are now on the site. They've been on the site for a little while. We've just been late with the announcement. So we should see much more of the CephCore catalog. There's a new CephCore catalog came out in uh, this year and has, uh, I guess, more pages to it because it's a bigger file. So you can go to their site and download that CephCore catalog catalog. Uh, we want to have more vendors on. So if you know vendors that you feel that should be on our site, they can host their material on our site for free. We're happy to have them because we want to help everyone and get everyone working with substations. So if, if you have somebody that you think should be on our site, they can uh, come on our site. And we're going to be talking about the vendors uh, as well today. Um, if vendors are coming on, or if you guys need to upload, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll be talking to that about that shortly, we can take in several file types in here for a single part type of file. So if you have a single part you want to see, we could convert those directly. When we download from the utility content, we can download 3D DWG Inventor and Step files. So here's the utility content for those who are, aren't familiar. So here's my uh, utility con content. So when we're looking at this, we can download individual parts throughout the, um, uh, the this web web page, and this is free for those who have sign-in privileges to the SBS uh, web page. So in this first page, I just want to remind people there's categories here. So if I type in in this first page, circuit breaker. I can come into electrical circuit breakers and see what parts I have available. Now, these are all individual IPT parts, all right? So they can be downloaded. You can look at the details and you can download this item, all right? So these parts are great as a placeholder. And some people actually use them in their finished construction models. But a lot of times when we're building items, when we're building items, the substation is built faster than what we can get um, any type of model from a vendor if we don't have that model already in our model library. So this is one of the key ideas of using this. What we also have are a lot of fittings. So if I come into um, conduit, if I'm searching for conduit, I can come in to, uh, let's go to Conduit Other or Conduit PVC. Let's go to that one. And here you can see a lot of little pieces of conduit that you can add in to 
to your uh, station and these are available. When we look at these, it says SBS. If it says SBS in the title page here, that means it's from SBS. So someone here at SBS, most likely myself, have made these pieces and made them available for utility content so people can use them. If I want some grounding connector, I can come in here, ground. And I'm gonna come into um, connector ground. Let's see. Connector bolted. So here's uh, all our connected, bol our, our bolted grounding ones. And these are all the set core ones. I think a lot of these are new now. Uh, some are three years ago, it's saying here. <laughs> so I just shot that one. But, you know, we have a lot of new ones, so it's hard for me to see it right away that they are new. If I come in connect and ground again, yeah, I'm just showing you how to get around here in that search. So I'm going to come in cable connectors grounding. And here's some more ground grounding items. And we get the, the whole mech items in here as well. But we should have pretty close to the entire uh, CEFCOR catalog in our um, database now here. Of course, if in our browse connect, our browse tool, when you come into the browse tool, I can browse for ASTI. Now that's a CEPCOR name. And I can look at that CEPCOR name and, and search it. Then I'm, I'm finding 43. All right. So that could be too many. Maybe I want to have um, uh, four MPS. So I can search on four MPS. So now it's searching for all the ASTI. So what a lot of people do, they find the item they want in the catalog, whether it's a CEPCOR catalog or whole neck and they find that part number they want or that family part number, and then they refine their search. And once they have that, they can download it and they can download, I'm not signed in, I'm surprised. And they can download the, um, the fitting here. And, when, and once you download, you can see you can download as a step IPT or a 3D DWG file. So these are the files that the standard, they're just uh, static parts that don't change that can be downloaded. Once you download them, you have them forever, right? So you can add whatever you need, the metadata you need, the uh, SDS intelligence you may need, whatever, whatever you need to that part, you can add to it once you download. I'm gonna remind people of the configurators we can go into the configurators. And generally what these configurators do, we can come into the details. I'm gonna come into the switch down here. I think this is one of my favorite here, uh, the V-switch. We look at the, a, a V-switch and you can change this. This is a V-switch, you can see it's open and closed. So it's, it has both positioning. When you download this, this is a, uh, a multi-body part. So you can turn off the images of this, whether it's in, uh, AutoCAD or in uh, Inventor. You can turn off the image to the way you want this set. If you come into the drawing world, you can have a reference drawing in here as well and just see what it looks like. Some of the drawings are more detailed because you need the detail. This one's pretty simple because it's not as necessary for the detail. If we change something in here, we can change that to be, uh, I, I want the insulators on. And maybe I don't want it open. And there's and there's our model. We can come into your downloads. We add it to the downloads, come in, and then we can download this part as well. Once we have it downloaded, you have it forever again. And that will come in as an IPT or a 3D DWG as well. So one of the reasons for this talk is not only to talk about the added um, CEFCOR parts. And the, um, what we want to talk about is the app that we've added in the user types. So if we look at our window here, you can see I have managed content. If you're a, a regular user, you will not have these options. I'm in a, as a vendor user with admin rights. All right. So if I come in and see my um, uh, let's go into dashboard, update profile. You can see that I am set as a vendor. 
All right, so we have different types of, of settings here that you can be. If you're a vendor, you can upload in, in the individual parts from the website or from the app. I think it would be better from the app to upload them, but we have that ability, all right? Uh, if you're a utility, you can also upload and share that with the NASI group, all right? Or if you're a, you, uh, an engineering service provider, we can work out something with that as well. So let's go back into our document here. So what we're gonna have, it, we have now we, the utility content app for Inventor 22 is available. And, we, and if you email us, we can work with you to um, get it installed. It's not fully developed, but it is uh, working quite well. We're developing it further, obviously. So you'll be able to download and search direct from inside of Inventor. And advanced users will be able to upload and manage. So advanced users, like I said, would, would be a vendors or utilities. We are looking at going further with it, that it will work with as for a utility that you can share models with other utilities using the, the NASI effort. All right, so if you look at the setups in, um, in the, uh, come in the browse here, you can see that I have the NASI group here that we can look under NASI, CEPH Core, SBS. So that's the North America, I always forget the name. The North America Utilities Content Sharing Initiative. So we have that trying to get our utilities sharing content with one another so that we all have content to build, build something from. We want to have that ability. What we're also looking at is uh, possibly having engineering vendors uh, that a utility could share content to their utility, uh, to their uh, engineering vendors. If they have their engineering vendors and they need content and they want to use the same stuff the, the utility is using, they can pass it on. Or even if the engineering company has sub vendors that they're using, they could pass it on to as through um, the app and through the website. So I'm going to come into Inventor and we're going to look at Inventor. Let's come into Inventor. And I'm in Inventor here. This is Inventor 2022. I'm going to look at the app. So I'm going to come in under tools. If you have the app installed, the add-in installed, it's a separate add-in. It's a free add-in. You can come into the add-in here. And here we can see our the same thing we were seeing earlier. If I want to download something, I can come in here. I'm going, I'm going to download the CCBT. So I come in here, I'm going to download. And now I can uh, download it directly into my part. So if you look in the window here, let's move this window over a bit and I can download that. And it will create a part. It's using the uh, an SDS template inside of uh, the software. And you can see the, uh, the, the uh, orientation is the way we want it to be with Z vertical. And we have that model directly here. So it's, the, it's delivering it directly into Inventor. And, when, and you can save that. And of course, if I hit save, it's going to save in my uh, folder uh, lo location and you'll see it down here, okay? So you can see it, it loads it directly in whatever project file I have, have active. I can take that now. Now I have it forever. I can add my metadata, my SDS intelligence, whether it's for uh, work geometry or for uh, design checks or you can add your ports in, uh, for the P4A product as well. And again, you have that forever once you have it. It's a multi-bodied part. So if you look at it in here, it's, you can see I have seven bodies. These can be turned on and off if, if you have an issue that you don't want that on and you want to maybe, well, I don't want a NEMA pad in there. You're gonna come in here, turn off the visibility and create your own connection on top. These are all built from catalog dimensions, so they are reasonably accurate. Again, some people will use these directly in their construction drawings. Some people use them as placeholders until they have them. Also with the, um, uh, the app in the, um, the usernames, if we come in the dashboard, I can come in here and create content directly. 
So if I'm creating content, I can come in here, identify parts I want to put up on the website and, and add them directly here. If I come up to dashboard, I can see all my downloads. I got 202 downloads. And these are all the downloads I had. I have done. So I, I may not want to download the same thing again and again because I haven't found it or whatever. For whatever reason, I can look at all my downloads in the past little while here. Go back up the dashboard. Um, manage your, your content. I can come in here and edit what I have. I can delete it or I can replace it. All right, so any, any, anything I put up there, if it shouldn't be there, if something was wrong with it, if I get feedback saying, hey, this is wrong, then we can change it or, or we can just add more. If I come into uh, what, well, let's go back to manage content. No, I wanna see my content. See your company's downloads here. So here I can look at the company's downloads and see who's downloaded my uh, parts, right? So you can have that, you can download that as a, uh, an XLS file, and you can have a record of who is downloading what and how much are they downloading and see which active ones and how, how your content is being used. If I come in and manage configurators, you can upload as well. So if you're set as a vendor or as a utility, you can have access to this. So we'll have to be able to give you that access, but once you have it, you, you'll have that access. So if I have a configurator and I placed it up there, I can edit the configurator, I can replace it, I can turn off the publishing of it. It does not need to be published. I can turn off that so no one sees it until I'm ready to release it. So there's a number of items here that we're able to do. Most of these items are available in the dashboard of the app. I go in the dashboard of the app. The only thing we can't download the, uh, the company download item from the app. It just doesn't work that way. If I look at my profile, you can see my profile, I'm a vendor. So generally that's all I really wanted to talk about with the, um, with the app. It's available, it's an add-in. Uh, you have normal user, you have vendor user and you have uh, utility user. They all give you slightly different permissions.